Okay, for my Nuffin Scholarship, I've taken on this task of understanding the biological needs of the cow in the modern dairy system, signals for success for many different reasons. And I'm uh, really in the middle of trying to do the thought process around that. And the cow's day has become very important. Here. What the cow faces, what she needs versus what she gets, and how that affects her performance, and ultimately the performance of the farm and profitability of the farm. So I have this thing and I like having a bit of fun with things in, in my own head and when I'm out on farms making up new assessments and understanding, trying to understand the system and I came up with this idea of measuring the stress gap from what the cow actually needs and what she gets in the farm and, and how you measure that stress gap and how, how it affects performance. So I want to think about the cow. Um, it's amazing, 16 years as a vet and some of the simple things I never really thought about before. And this is nothing new that I've come up with. I've, it's from research of different people, different figures I've heard over the last while, observations. Uh, you know, a cow, what speed does a cow move at? Slow. It's three kilometers an hour. So that's quite slow. And she does that. She picks her steps and she moves it at speed. Now, if anything increases that speed, the cow's head has to go up, particularly when you're moving her. Um, and she's not picking her feet, which can be a problem for lameness, but ultimately it increases stress over time. So, you know, if you're doubling the speed a cow is moving at, you're increasing stress on the cow, increasing lameness and putting more pressure. What temperature is a cow happy at? Uh, zero to four degrees, because a cow or a rumen has this engine, this massive engine or rumen, this fermentation bath creates so much heat, the temperature they're comfortable at is about zero to four degrees. So that's why we talk about heat stress, but it's such a problem with cows, and cold stress actually not so much, because you don't have you just go quite low before you can see an effect. So again, um, temperature, uh, what's the stress gap? And if I think about the vision of the cow, and this is back to them being a herd animal, it's really important to understand. Their eyes on the side of their head watching for predators. Lateral vision, their vision is actually quite slow. So their perception of what we, our movement is much slower um, than you would think. But that's where their eyes are out. So if you're approaching cows from the front, or behind they can't see you so it can cause stress so it's something to be aware of when we're moving around cows and this really comes to the flight zone which is the real interesting one for me and it's something I've probably been learning a bit over the last few years but certainly when I qualified first I had no perception of even um, and maybe I did have but I didn't understand it properly um, and you know flight zone if I do a lot of hill walking if it's deer you know it's 400 yards but our dairy cows what we're aiming for is a flight zone of two meters and a flight zone is when you step into their pressure zone uh, into their flight zone, pressure zone, you, they'll move away from you. So ultimately it's a very good indication of, of how cows interact with humans on a farm. If the flight zone is really long or really uh, far, even if they're not much human interaction. Obviously strangers can have different flight zones to farmers themselves, but it can be a crude indicator for, for us on farms. You know, dairy, you know, if you look at robotic milking farms where the robot, the cow is doing things under her, her own terms and conditions, the flight zone is quite low, it's down to a meter. Now you don't want it at zero because those cows won't move, they won't do anything, they're like pets. Uh, so you need it just above zero, but less than two meters. In grazed cows, it's, ob it's okay to be about four meters, but it's an interesting one to look at because it's, it's giving her me an indication about how comfortable the cow is, and again, the stress gap. If there's massive flight zones, heads are up, cows are alert, watching me all the time, nervous, running from me, I'm wondering what's going on with those cows. Sounds, I must remember that a cow's hearing is twice as sensitive as ours. So if it's twice as sensitive as ours, they're very sensitive to noise, particularly you know, loud banging, sharp noises. Particularly at milking time, that's where we want to keep noise down. You know, so like, if I understand these behaviours and the impact of them as well, I think you know a bit of better understanding of what the training will look like or what the type of person that's more suited to. Uh, that's that's another day's work, working with cows. Always understanding that they're a herd animal. Um, always waiting for the predator. They'll be dominant cows, submissive cows. They'll be herds, even in big, larger farms. They'll be, they can be herds within within the, the larger herds, so with groups. Uh, and what, these are really important. This is back to the cow signal stuff again. Well, what does a cow want in her 24 hour days, especially when she's milking? Two hours of milking time. If you max out that, you, she's too much time standing, she's away from her, either lying, eating. And lying time and eating feeding time are so important with the cow. In the indoor cow, lying time and rumination or chewing the cud, you're looking for 14 hours. In a grey situation, you're looking for probably that to be 
at about 10 hours, um, feeding time in the indoor cow about 6 hours, you look 6 to 8 hours, and the feeding time in the grazed cow is about 10 hours. Then you've do about 2 hours where cows are socialising, moving around, you know, interacting with each other, you've cut uh, time for drinking water. So if you balance that up, that's what the cow looks for in the day. And this is the idea for me of the stress gap. The more stress that's in the situation, the further you push the cow from what she wants, the less performance is. So welfare versus performance, they're the same thing really to me, and I think this is really critical. Um, so a large stress gap, stress gap, so I'm building this measurement tool at the moment, and it's very interesting to look at it, and it's difficult to do, but it's interesting. Um, so what will the stress, will a large stress gap do? It'll put pressure on the cow, put pressure on the system, and you know, the performance won't be where it should be. A good day for the cow, giving her these things, will mean good welfare and good performance. And that's where I'm at, and look, always looking for feedback, Particularly on email, um, my email is tommy at uh, co-farm.org if people want to give me feedback on what they think. Um, constructive criticism, good, or it, you know, this might work, that, might, that won't work. So this is where I'm at with my nothing at the moment. It's the cow's day, understanding what it is. Back to good day, good welfare, good performance.